So Yvette van der Eyck, you talked about a a tobacco-free generation. What does that term mean? Tobacco-free generation is basically uh, this target that we don't want our younger kids to start smoking. So it's basically looking at uh, you know looking at how we can change the social environment such that smoking becomes rarely observed, that they don't want to start smoking. Yeah. Okay. And what are countries? What are what are different steps that countries are taking to try to achieve that? Well, there are various examples. So, for example, in countries like uh, Ireland, New Zealand, uh, places like Scotland, you know, they've put specific emphasis on tobacco-free generations as the focus for new rules against tobacco. So they will actually want to be tobacco-free completely by a certain year, so reducing overall smoking prevalence to, say, 5% by a certain year, and focuses on tobacco-free generations. So they're looking in particular, for example, smoke-free areas, um, like for example playgrounds, beaches, parks, areas where children often roam. Yeah, and then they're looking at for example, uh, you know, like taxation as very effective ways to reduce uh, smoking among youth, plain packaging, uh, warning campaigns in the media, things like that. Okay, and are there, are there um, countries that are, are attempting to pass legislation that would are there countries that are attempting to pass legislation that would prohibit people of a certain age from buying cigarettes? At the moment, uh, there's nothing in the making, you know, in terms of legislation, but the idea has been explored in different places. So, for example, uh, this idea came from a group in Singapore, and what they want to do is they want to deny tobacco sales to anyone born in the millennium, so anyone born after 1st of July 2000. So these kids who are now, say, 16 years old or 15, they will never be able to buy tobacco regardless of their age. And this is an idea that's being explored by this group in Singapore. So what they're doing is they're going into schools, um, they're basically um, making children aware of this idea and they're encouraging them to become part of the tobacco-free generation. So in Singapore, it's like, uh, it's, it's pressure for the legislation, but at the same time, it's a social movement with the children. And is there, is there much pushback against the movement? Not at the moment. I mean, the politicians haven't really made it a priority yet. Um, but if they keep on the pressure, um, then perhaps, and, and that brings me to the second point, which is in Tasmania, it's also being explored, and it actually went to the parliament, to their upper house, where they proposed it. Now, they haven't accepted the movement, but they're still putting pressure on them to, to legislate for this in Tasmania. Yeah, so I think, for example, if Tasmania goes ahead with it, then there's a better chance that Singapore will go ahead. There's also been talk about this in the UK, uh, there was a group of doctors, they took the idea to the British Medical Council and they proposed it um, to be implemented in the UK and there was very strong support there as well. There's support in the Medical Council? British Medical Council. Okay. Yeah. Did, did it go to Parliament at all or just an idea right now? No, it's, at the moment it's just an idea and it's being debated. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you think, do you think the, the, the public in countries that have, you know, that are generally free and open would ever agree to that? Uh, yeah, I think there's a possibility. I mean, for example, uh, in the UK, smoking prevalence was once over 40%, mm -hmm. and smoking was widely accepted. People would smoke literally everywhere in front of your children during pregnancy. It was not considered a problem. Whereas now, these things are really considered socially acceptable. You know, um, and we wouldn't think of walking into a restaurant and it'd be filled with smoke. The idea is just kind of... You know, it's very undesirable. So I think, you know, if we keep on progress, there will be a point where certain countries will be ready. And then when those countries are ready and they go ahead with it, other countries will be ready and the effect just kind of keeps on moving. How, how long, how many generations do you think it'll, it'll be until that happens? Really depends on where you are. I yeah. think some places may even be ready for it. I think Singapore uh, is one of those countries that could be ready for it. They just need more political pressure. Uh, because as I explained earlier, you know, in, in Singapore, people are very accepting of, of new laws. You know, for example, they ban chewing gum, no one bats it an eyelid, they're just okay, they don't eat chewing gum. Mm -hmm. You know, so why not tobacco? Oh, they ban chewing gum in Singapore? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But no one cares, you see, yeah. people just don't care about chewing gum, and no one made a protest, was okay. okay. And people are generally quite trusting of, of, of government legislations, it's usually in the public's best interests. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, I think those are all the questions I had. Okay. I appreciate it very much. All thank right, you. Thank you. All right.